What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson. And today, I'm gonna show you how I made these. <sighs> Beautiful, delicious, smoky, confit, amazing, beefy barbecue Swadero street tacos featuring some homemade corn tortillas and a whole bunch of other stuff that is super tasty. <sighs> Coming up. <laughs> this is some meat. Pat it dry. And what I got here is a cut you may not have seen or heard of before. It's called a suadero. Very popular for taco meat and things like that. It's a thin cut, kind of like a flap meat cut that comes from the cow, somewhere between the belly and the leg. And just looking at it, first things first, you can tell it's got some nice big grain structure. So it's gonna cook up a lot like a brisket or a short rib. It's also got a very thin layer of silver skin all over the back here, which reminds me a lot of a beef cheek, which is a good thing because we're gonna cook this thing very similarly to how we would cook a beef cheek. Got a nice fat cap on there. Some of this wants to peel up, so I might take some of that down a little bit. Although really, it doesn't matter because we're gonna smoke and confit this thing. So all this fat is gonna render off. So I'm just gonna go around and clean this up just a little bit. But really, I'm not gonna do anything to this. I kinda wanna take this thin piece off, but we're gonna rock it today. And I'm definitely not gonna tackle all this silver skin because that would be a pain in the butt. Also, it's gonna break down in the cooking process. So all we need to do is get this thing seasoned up. For our rub today, I'm gonna keep it real simple with my classic SPG that I like to use for anything that I'm trying to get a brisket-y like bark on, which is two parts, 16 mesh black pepper on sale now at Shop Chuds. Dot com, followed by one part diamond crystal kosher salt and one half part granulated garlic. And just get that all nice and mixed up. And because this thing is looking a little bit dry, I'm gonna go on with a slather of just some good old Texas Pete hot sauce. Anything moist will work. And then a nice heavy coating of our rub. Nothing too fancy here, folks. Just trying to build up a nice layer of bark on there. That's why I want a really heavy black pepper rub. And because we are gonna be confiting this thing, going a little heavier on this rub is gonna be a good thing. Then again, it's also gonna be kind of shredded and chopped up at the end so we can always adjust for salt down the road. Looking good. Flip it over. A little more hot sauce on this side. And same deal, trying our best not to forget the sides because that, of course, would be a rookie move. And if you can't find this cut, which is likely. I found this one online a while back. It's been sitting in the freezer waiting for this very video, but you could use something else like brisket or short ribs. Beef cheeks would also work really well, but I've never cooked this before. So when I saw it online, I had to pick it up because I always love trying out new cuts. And there we go. That is looking pretty much perfect to me. Let's fire up the pit. And on the pit we go. We're gonna go fat cap up, thicker side toward the fire. Really not trying to do anything too crazy right now. Just get some good color on there, some nice bark building. And we wanna make sure it's nice and smoky. So I'm gonna rock this probably a little lower and slower, around 250 for a little bit, and then crank it up to get some of that fat rendering down. This video is brought to you by Coming to Your Coffee. This past month, I've been traveling a lot, and anyone that I travel with can attest to the fact that I always bring Cometeer coffee with me. And if you're unfamiliar with Cometeer coffee, basically they use really high quality coffee from roasters all around the world, and then brew it to perfection. And when it's at its peak freshness, they freeze it in these little tiny metal capsules at super cold temperatures, locking in the flavor, and you keep these frozen until you're ready to use them. And I've been a fan of Cometeer coffee for a very long time now, because it really is the fastest, most efficient, and easiest way to get a beautiful cup of coffee first thing in the morning, in seconds. Bust out one of these little caps capsules here. Top that with some hot boiling water. And just like that, you've got yourself a piping hot cup of joe. And like I said, I always bring this with me when I'm traveling. And that's because I really hate disrupting my morning routine. I was just in New York City a couple weeks back and everyone else got up extra early so they could hop on the train to go to the nearest coffee shop to buy a super expensive cup of coffee. While I got to sleep in, wake up, grab one of these guys out of the fridge, pour it in a cup, and I had my morning coffee and my shower before they even got back. Super convenient. I mean, come on, folks, it's so quick and easy. And also, genuinely delicious. Very good stuff. Genuinely good cup of coffee, first thing in the morning that's cheaper than any coffee shop you're gonna find. And best part is they ship it right to your door every month to make sure you never run out. And you can customize your own box depending on if you like a light roast or dark roast. And I'm super pumped to be stocked up on this stuff. So if you wanna give Cometeer Coffee a try for yourself, go to Cometeer.com using the link in the description box of this video where you can use code CHUDS40 to get $20 off your first two months of Cometeer. That's a savings of $40 over your first two orders. Again, link in the description, use code CHUDS40 to get $40 off your first two orders. 
supporters. Thank you, commenter. All right, folks, we're about four or five hours into this cook. And let's see how that meat is looking. Ooh, looking nice and barky. Would you look at that? Looks just like a big old floppy brisket. Ooh, toasty. Clock this right around 185, 190. But again, we're not really going for temp right now. We're just going for smoke and bark and some good fat render. And I must say, looking fantastic. Still feeling pretty tough, even though we're upward of 200 degrees though. Which is why we're gonna come feel it like a beef cheek. So now all we need to do is submerge this in some good old fashioned beef tallow. Oh yeah, there's something so wrong, yet so right about it. Oops, oh no. And now into a 200 degree oven this goes overnight. What? All right, to start things off with these tacos, we're gonna bust out a real simple guacamole to put on top because that just sounds good to me. So I got a couple of avocados here looking very nice. Gonna go in with a big fat pinch of salt, one diced up jalapeno, some of our chopped garlic, splash of some lime juice, some of our white onion, nice fine dice on that, some of our Roma tomatoes, cause why not? And a big fat pinch of some chopped up cilantro. A lot of knife work for a basic guacamole, but it comes together real quick. I decided that I wanted a nice smooth guac, so plus Ooh, beautiful. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves a quick salsa matcha. Starting by going into this pot with some avocado oil, a couple of cups of that, and just let that heat up for a little bit. In the meantime, I'm gonna bust out our chilies. We got some guajillos, some ancho, and a couple of chili de arbol for a little bit of heat. These have already been de-seeded and de-topped, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tear these up into some smaller pieces. And once it's toasted up, we're gonna go in with some of our garlic. This has just got a rough chop on it. And we're gonna let this warm up nice and gently until our garlic is nice and toasty. And once it's starting to turn golden brown, we're gonna go in with our sesame seeds. I'm going with some black sesame seeds today for that nice dark look. And once that garlic is nice and toasted, but not burnt, we're gonna kill the heat and go in with all of our chilies and just let these kind of steep in here for about 10, 15 minutes just to cool down and soften up these chilies a bit. And once everything has steeped down, and cooled down a little bit. We're gonna go into the food processor. Ooh, look at the color of that oil. Gotta love that. Get any of these pesky sesame seeds out of here too. And go with a few other ingredients, including a little bit of some oregano, some fish sauce, some cilantro leaves, and some lime juice. And get that nice and blended up. Really just trying to break up the peppers here, make sure everything is evenly incorporated, but we still want it to be kind of chunky, so don't go full puree on it. At this point, give it a taste. Definitely needs a big fat pinch of salt and kind of adjust as you like, but I gotta tell you, this stuff tastes great. <laughs> gotta say folks, this stuff is super tasty. Oh, nice and chunky, nice and thick. Next up, we're gonna make some corn tortillas and I have had no good luck in the past on this, but I think today is gonna be different because I got some masienda, yellow corn masa. And this stuff is great. So into the food processor, I'm going in with two cups of the masa. Pop that lid on and get it spinning. And then two cups of warm water is gonna slowly get mixed in. And slowly but surely, we'll get ourselves a nice dough form. And once all together, we should have ourselves a beautiful little dough ball. Not too sticky, but not too dry. Looking good. So what I did is took all that dough and divided it up into 22 gram dough balls, because that's what Fermin does down at Suerte, and that is the taco I'm trying to imitate right now. And flatten these out, I'm busting out a tortilla press, a traditional one. And I know, you're probably thinking, hey Brad, why don't you just use the one that you build and sell? And it does work, although corn is a little bit more fickle to work with, and it tends to stick and just like rip apart. And it's also got more torque, instead of just having to push real hard. So, nothing to it, just a little boop, little plastic bag in there, just to keep things from sticking. A thick boy. And there we go, beautiful little corn tortilla. And I do have mine fired up as a flat top right now, so on we go. Got a little tortilla warmer over here to keep these nice and steamy. Beautiful. Look at that, we've got some puffage. Ow. 
And after a very long confit, let's see how this meat came out, shall we? Ooh, smelling good. Oh yeah, definitely feeling tender. Thing's about to break in half. Pop this on this wire rack and let some of that fat drain off. Oh goodness, yeah, look at that. Rips right apart. Oh, beautiful stuff. Must say, this is smelling fantastic. Beautiful bark on there, held up. Fat cap is completely rendered, and this meat is, oh, that's what we want. It's like pork belly. This should make for some excellent tacos. Oh, beautiful. I'm gonna let this rest for a minute before I go ahead and pull it all. All right, I can't wait any longer. And we're just gonna involve this grease, you know. I'm not too upset about it. And it's just gonna pull this apart, you know? We could chop this up, but ooh, those strands. Wow, that's hot. I've never seen a cut of beef look more like pulled pork belly. All you whole hog guys know what I'm talking about. Wonderful render on that. Smells nice and smoky still. Obviously quite beefy. Good mind if I do. Mm. Oh my God, the flavor. So smoky, so tender. Nothing wrong with that, folks. Yeah, I'm not chopping that. I think that's perfect. Oh. Love it. All right, y'all, I think it's time to assemble some beautiful Swadero tacos. Starting off, we'll go down with a little mound of our beautiful Swadero meat. Almost barbacoa, but not quite. Go on top of each one of these with a little dollop of our super smooth avocado guacamole situation. Top that with a cilantro onion mixture. Little brightness, little freshness, little bite. Yes, please. And last but most certainly not least, we'll go on with some of this beautiful salsa matcha, which is very reminiscent of a chili oil. Oh, that's beautiful. Nice and chunky. That fragrant garlic, those sesame seeds, nice and dark. It's gonna add a whole world of flavor. I'm Definitely making this again. Oh, beautiful. I gotta say folks, ever since I first went to Suerte and had their confit brisket Swadero tacos with their black magic oil, the avocado crudo on their house-made corn tortillas, I've been wanting to try and make it myself. And uh, as you can see by my arm here, I think we're doing pretty well because this is nice and drippy, nice and juicy. Tortilla is holding up well and what a beautiful bite if I do say so myself. So I gotta go for it. Oh, oh my God. Mm. Holy hell, that is absolutely ridiculous. Mm. Very close in flavor. Oh my God. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. I mean, what more do you need, folks? It's smoky, fatty beef pulled to perfection on a handmade corn tortilla. Well, freshly made. I didn't nixtamalize the corn. That's coming up in a future episode, maybe someday. But that salsa matcha with that super creamy avocado guacamole sauce and the freshness of the onion, it's just a perfect bite. That corn tortilla, though, brings that nice, earthy corniness, nice and fresh. Mm. Y'all have to make this. First time making uh, corn tortillas on camera too. Let me know what you think. Pretty proud of that. Good Lord. Mm. Ah, and it's a little street taco, you know, knock back like 45 of these, call that a good day. Ah. Mm. That's so good. Definitely a little greasy though, but I should probably share these with someone, but uh, right now I just can't stop eating them. Mm. 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 Oh my God, yes please. Honestly, this tastes almost exactly the same as theirs. Whose? Suerte's. Yeah. Yours isn't as spicy as I think as theirs are. Yeah, mm -hmm. I shouldn't have deseeded the chili de arbol. Uh-huh, still very delicious. Last Ooh, my ham, greasy. Salsa <clears throat> matcha plus beef mm. though is a combination to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, it's dripping down my hand. <laughs> so good. These are delicious and they're like, they're cute. They stay together. They're so cute. And we, I mean, it smells exactly like you want it to. It's just like, it's got everything right there. Mmm. Mmm. That's fantastic. It has all the flavor that you want. It's super beefy. It, it's honestly like super similar to barbacoa, mm -hmm. but just has like a little bit more of a stringy texture and not as like gooey gelatinous for people who don't want that. Mm -hmm. But everything else on there, oh my God, the salsa matcha is such a winner. Yeah, I'm surprised like- Quack is perfect. This is something nice about too, when you get like tacos Stop that are really that. goopy mm -hmm. is you just like get in there. My God. Fresh Ooh, corn torn. Who now. now? Eat me. Take a big bite and then finish it. This is like really, like the perfect taco to me is two bites. That way I can eat a lot of them. Exactly. I've already had six. If you really wanted to, mm -hmm. you could eat that in one bite. The Bruins are up and God damn it. I'm not sure if you guys could tell, but Evan's a big fan of hockey and if he's been looking at the left the whole time. <laughs> All right, one bite, do it. All right, okay. Everybody knows the rules. <laughs> All right, folks, with this last taco that has got no onions on it, I think it's time for the official taste test. 
Alright y'all, I'm going to zip that inside and make some absolutely incredible barbecue Swadero street tacos. I highly recommend giving this one a try. The salsa matcha, the barbecue beef, whatever cut you choose, it's going to be great with those homemade corn tortillas. Mm, highly recommend it. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.